Yes, good morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Come on in, good morning. God is so good. Let's go. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. He'll never change. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, praise God. Let's get our Instagram family in. Praise God, good morning, guys. Good morning, God bless you all. Free conference, good morning. Praise God. Yes, yeah, good morning. Good morning, Zoe, y'all coming in. Y'all popping in. <laughs> From eternity, hey. He'll be. Yes, he is. Woo, good morning, my bishop. Good morning, sir. <laughs> that morning, man, I get us going. Come, let's praise the Lord. He is El Shaddai. Good morning. Good morning, Instagram. God bless y'all. Come on in here. Good morning. Good morning, Brother Doug. <laughs> Good morning, Jack Lindsay Queen. God bless you. Good morning. Hey. Hey. Good morning, my beautiful sister. Say it, Lord Jesus. No microphone. Say it, sister. <laughs> Rodney Stu. Good morning, Deborah Sharp. Charmaine Coleman. Good morning, class. Good morning, Dr. Dean. Good morning, Overseer Ryan. Good morning, Lady Dyson. Sylvia Spike. Pastor Will Lamone. Let's go. Hey. Hey, hey, oh, <laughs> Shirley Young, good morning, darling. Good morning, TJ, 072. Good morning, Dr. Skillman. Good morning, pastors, doctors, evangelists, popes, and popes. Hey. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Thank you, Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Hey. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Let's go. Hey, Monica. Happy birthday, darling. Good morning, Monica. Good morning. Hey. When I was? Hey. Good morning, Apostle Robert. Yes. Kelly Gregory. Good morning, Aretha Foster. Good morning. Hi, Kyle. I'm excited too. You mind if I call you Kyle? <laughs> hey, Lynn Abbott. The bad is the keeper. I got you in front, baby. I got you up in the high, high space. Good morning, my Instagram family. Good morning. Good morning to the one of the most seeing king high prophets in the land today, Papa Rosa. I gotta get you to the show. We need to do something. Good morning, Evie. Step back to the king. God bless you. Enjoy your publishing. Give that, Scafford. Hey, y'all on Instagram, share. Share, share. Hey, Facebook, share. Camilla, good morning. Good morning, Pastor Jamison. Praise him. With all your where hey yes yes come on in y'all sorry <laughs> that's the hidden condition judges lee good morning hey 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 he will what out. Don't forget your book. The Spirit Feel Life. Catch it, catch it. When we finish the basics, that's where we're going. Yes, praise him. 
Praise him. Praise him. Hey. Good morning. God bless y'all. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you all so much for being with us this morning. We took a day off on yesterday for voice rest and uh, nursed our voice and took some time with our throat <laughs> and applied oil and drank tea. But we praise God this morning. Good morning. That's terrible to do on camera. Ah, <laughs> oh, God bless y'all. Come on in. Good morning. Listen, I want to do this for all of you that send in your seed by mail. I want to. I want you to know that I have them in my hand, and I pray over them. Once uh, they come in the mail, they're received in, and our team. I mix whatever deposits that need to be made, and then they're given to me for prayer. So uh, Wilbur and Wendy Atkins, uh, Mother Pearl, Mama Pearl, uh, Noray. Uh, we have uh, so many. Let's see. We have. Uh, oh my goodness. We have so many. I won't read them all. Western Unions. Thank you so much. Um, uh, let's see. Right aids, praise God. I don't know. Let's see. Sometimes the names are already gone. This is um William Lamont. God bless you. God bless you, Pastor William. Thank you so much for your seed. Uh Charette Bonet. She said, I thank God for your life, the union upon you, and the ministries that He has given you with that Sharita Boney. Thank you, darling. Ingrid Ingram, thank you, my darling, my partner, one of my partners. Thank you so much here in the city. Um, William, Pastor William Lamone, thank you again. Wadsworth, thank you so much for your tremendous seeds that you are giving. Uh, I want to acknowledge you this morning for uh, Deborah Sharp, praise God, uh, for... Um, Linda Atlas, those of you that, that mail it in, I just wanted you to know that I have them in my hands and I hold them to my heart. Thank you. You helped me to do this great work. Thank you. And may God bless it back a million fold in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For those of you that give uh, online, continue to do so. Uh, for those of you that sow your $5 seed, uh, your tuition every week online, I want to say thank you. Uh, for those of you that go to our website, thank you. For those of you that sow by mail, some of you come by the church and drop it all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God is such a blessing. Uh, to me, he's such a gift. And he does it through people. He does it through you, the class. Thank you for all of you that sow by Cash App, by Zale. Uh, those of you that stop by the church and worship with us on Sunday and present it to me personally, there is no preference. I don't have any preferred way uh, that you would give whatever is convenient for you. I'm just honored that you give. And that you are with me here Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Eastern, the replay on YouTube, the replay on Facebook, get into the thousands every day. So I want to say thank you. Thank you for your seed. Thank you for your support. Uh, thank you, every one of you. And when I see the names come through in the reports, through your virtual giving, I, I hold it to my heart hold it in my hand, and I pray over your seed. Your tuition matters to me. So I never want you to think that it just goes someplace. No. PayPal, thank you. For those of you, Apostle uh, Sonia, thank you. For those of you that, and uh, my uh, team, my financial team is saying, we thank you for your faithful giving. Don't make me cry. Please. But I'm so grateful. I'm just grateful. I'm just so grateful that you see the value and that you are pushing 
uh, the value and the vision forward. So thank you. May God bless it. Back to you 1,000 fold and all that you do, and not just in money, but in favor. I want to open this week by decreeing the blessing of favor on your lives for the seeds and the support, your physical presence every day, <clears throat> sharing it on your Facebook pages, um, sharing it with friends and family, sending links that it that makes it possible for me to do this work. And I am grateful. As you already know, I'm not here for money. <laughs> I am not here because, you know, I don't have anything else to do. Uh, I'm here because God has ordained this time for Holy Spirit to be exalted in our lives around the world. And because he has chosen me to share and chosen you to receive so that you might share, I'm just honored. Thank you so much. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Oh, my God. Oh, Lord have mercy. Mm. Thank you so much. We are we are so blessed. And thank you for every seed that you've sown. Every seed, every seed, every prayer, every time you share, every time you watch the replay, every time you push the algorithms up, you are sharing this good news about Holy Spirit. Hey, I'm Bishop Coletta J. Vaughn. I'm a pneumatologist, and I'm so, so excited about you being here and about us coming together in this season of Holy Spirit. This is the era of Holy Spirit. I don't know if you understand that, but this is the era of Holy Spirit. And because we are living in the era of Holy Spirit, we must, we must. Um, elevate our knowledge of his working in our lives. We must elevate our knowledge of him moving uh, in all of our spaces and uh, all that he is doing in our lives. We must elevate our knowledge of Holy Spirit. We must elevate. Somebody put that in the chat. I must elevate my knowledge of Holy Spirit. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. This is the era of Holy Spirit and God is doing some wonderful things already. I've been 41 of you have shared uh, already this morning. You understand what I'm saying? This, I can't tell you. I can't tell you the value that you are to my life. And I praise God for it. Amen. We are, um, we are moving into the basics 101 of Holy Spirit. We are moving into the basics. Praise God. Thank you, Mama Pearl, for tea. She sends me tea. Juliet, y'all send tea. You send t-shirts. <laughs> I'm just a I'm just a blessed woman. And I'm excited about it. Write it in the chat. I must elevate my knowledge of Holy Spirit. I must elevate my knowledge of Holy Spirit. I must elevate my knowledge of Holy Spirit. I want you to write that down in the chat. Write that down on your notes if you're taking notes. In this, the era of Holy Spirit, I must elevate my knowledge of the basics of what I believe. If I believe that Jesus died, I need to be able not only to believe it, but to share it with others. If I believe that he was raised from the dead, then I must be able to share uh, that with others. If I believe that he is coming back or that the ascension took place, then I must, I must be able to share that. And that comes from knowledge. That comes from knowledge. That's not your experience. Your experience is a valid experience. And we thank God for the experiences that you have with God, uh, the experience that you have with Jesus Christ, the experience that you have with Holy Spirit, but you can't teach your experience. You can only testify of your experience. But if, it, if it's going to come down to you sharing, to you being able to reproduce 
you're going to have to increase in the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ. And it's not going, that's, this is not going to change. Uh, this is not going to change. It's not going to in any way uh, um, change in terms of the requirements that we have when we say that we are baptized in Holy Spirit. When we say we're living in the era of Holy Spirit, this is not going to change, folks. This is going to be forever and ever that we are going to have to continue to elevate. We must continue to elevate in our knowledge of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that that uh, brings us back uh, to the Colossians text. And I want us to go there again in the text, in the Colossians text. And I want us to just revisit uh, what it is that we are studying in terms of the basic doctrines. We do not want to be people who have practices without principles. We do not want to be the people that do things without doctrine. We don't want to be shouting saints and don't know what we're shouting about or don't know why we are shouting. We don't want to be that group of people that have that can't explain why we shout. <laughs> you know, we don't want to just be courting Christ. We want to be in a committed relationship with Christ. And then we want to be in covenant with Christ. We don't just want to court Jesus. We don't just want to be in the courtship stage where we are dating and we are doing the things that uh, we believe, you know, we should go out on dates and, you know, have fun together. No, we want to get out of the courtship stage and we want to get into the space where we know who he is and we know him and he knows us. We want to be in that space with him. We want to be committed. We want to be in covenant. We want to be monogamous. We don't want to be polygamous. We want to be monogamous to God. We want to have one Lord, one faith and one baptism. We're going to go to that today. One Lord, one faith and one baptism. One, one Lord, one faith and one baptism. We don't want to be in the space where we are confused about our faith. We want to have the gift of Holy Spirit. We want all of the manifestations of Holy Spirit, but we do not want to be ignorant concerning the gifts, concerning the doctrines, concerning baptism, concerning the foundations of our faith. So let's go back to Colossians for just a moment. Praise God. Good morning, Marcella Smith. Chris, Chris, happy birthday. God bless you, uh, Dr. Juliet. Let's go back to Colossians chapter number uh, three, two, Colossians chapter number two. It says, as you therefore have received Christ Jesus, the Lord, so now walk in him. Walking in him has to do with your lifestyle. When, whenever the Bible talks about walk in him, it's not talking about your two feet. You understand that? It's talking about your lifestyle. So when he says, as now you have received Christ, your lifestyle must reflect that. You can't just say, oh, I know Jesus Christ and you're still twerking. <laughs> I know that's old, right? <laughs> I don't know. Good morning, my darling. <laughs> Dr. Butts, amen. So glad to see you the other night. Dr. Alfred Copeland, listen, I love you more, baby. Thank God for you. Um, uh, you 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 don't want to be a polygamist. You don't want to have many gods. You want to know, you want to know your faith. One Lord, one faith, and one baptism, one God who is above all and in us all, through us all. His name is Jesus the Christ. And he has gone away and sent back his Holy Spirit. Now, they are not one and the same. So some people, you know, I, I'm not here to discuss doctrines. That's not of, of, your, of your particular liturgy. I'm here to discuss biblical doctrine. And so when, when we have biblical doctrine, when we understand that there is biblical doctrine, I'm not talking about your particular liturgical doctrine. So we have Jesus only, which is 
people who believe that God, Jesus, Holy Spirit are really one, one, not one in expression, but one for real, like father, then father came, became Jesus and stopped being father and then became Jesus. Then Jesus became Holy Spirit and stopped being Jesus. No, I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm not here to, I'm not here to debate that. Then there are those of us who are Trinitarians. We believe Father, Son, Holy Spirit are one in, in equality, one in equity, uh, one in power, vision, and purpose, but three distinct persons, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And so we're, we're not here to debate that. But even understanding the Trinity is a doctrine. You know, so it's, it, when people say, well, Jesus is the Holy Spirit, no, that's not biblical doctrine. That may be the doctrine of your reformation. That may be the doctrine of your denomination, but that's not biblical doctrine. You understand what I'm saying? And, and so uh, I was uh, getting ready this morning and the Holy Spirit was speaking to me uh, from, from a text that I had heard many, many years ago. And I didn't even have, have a chance to look it up, but I just, I knew he was talking to me. Uh, to, when Paul was talking about how um, some preach, you know, in confusion and some preach for debate. I think that's that Philippians passage. And uh, some preach even from envy and strife. <laughs> some preach from selfish ambition, not sincerely. Uh, some preach out of love. Uh, what then? Paul says, this is that Philippian text 1 and 18, only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached. <laughs> and in this I rejoice. Hallelujah. And we'll rejoice. So it's not about me agreeing with you or you agreeing with me. Christ is preached. Christ is preached. Whether you preach it from your doctrine or whether I preach it from mine. <laughs> Christ has preached. But biblical doctrine sometimes differs from denominational doctrine. This is why you must know scripture. This is why Holy Spirit led, spirit led, word fed people are very, very much more productive because you're not just spirit led, but you're word fed. <laughs> Praise God. Christ is preached. Surely some preach, uh, thank you, Kadisha. Some preach Christ out of envy and rival, rivalry. Some preach Christ out of competition. Some preach Christ out of, out of, out of, you know, all of that. But Christ is preached. Hallelujah. <laughs> thank you, God. And just because it is your denominational doctrine does not mean it's biblical doctrine. And so that's why we have so many different denominations, over 11,000 denominations uh, and representations of Christianity in the world, over 11,000. And many times it is because they differ on a comma or a semicolon and they come into a place where they reproduce what they believe the Bible says. So you have got to know what scripture says, Dr. Nika. We have got to know. It doesn't matter if Christ is preached because they, they hate you <laughs> or Christ is preached out of jealousy or Christ is preached out of rivalry or competition or strife. Paul says, what does that matter? Christ is preached. He, he, he spoke that to me, oh my God, today. But how can Holy Spirit speak scripture to you? If you don't know scripture, he won't, he can't, you don't, you can't identify now because as Holy Spirit was ministering to me this morning and he spoke that word to me, Christ is preached. And I knew he was, you know, sharing with me some things about some things happening in my spaces. Uh, and he said, but Christ is preached. Christ is preached, whether it's out of competition, whether it's out of hatred, it doesn't matter. Christ is preached. Now, 
because you have certain doctrinal beliefs, many times it is hard for us to come into the unity of the faith. I just said that, Camilla, wow. Uh, until we come into the unity of the faith, praise God. So biblical doctrine, uh, we are talking about, we were talking about the, Col the Colossians 2. It says, beware. No, let's go back to verse seven. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith. Establish in the faith. <laughs> Praise God. Establish in the faith as you have been taught. As you have been taught, abounding in it, growing up in it with thanksgiving. So beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of man, according to basic principles of the word of the world and not according to Christ. For in Christ dwells all of the fullness of the Godhead bodily. That is, that is a powerful verse, but many people don't fully, fully understand it. Uh, it says here, and you were complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. And in him, verse 11, you were also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. So we got into the doctrine of circumcision that it now indicates you are walking in covenant. And um, here, here is, here is um, the visual that I can give you about this is, is when you go into a wedding ceremony. The wedding ceremony is not the marriage. Okay. The wedding ceremony is not the marriage. <laughs> so thousands and thousands of dollars are spent on the wedding. But after the wedding comes the marriage. So courtship, all right commitment now you enter into covenant now you have to live with each other now you have to dwell together as one now you have to cherish and love and honor and submit to each other now now you're in covenant you were in a commitment pastor michael Cumber. you were in the commitment but you were not in the marriage yet so the wedding is not the marriage. <laughs> All the people ain't going to be at the marriage, although they're at the wedding. They'll come to the reception and eat up all your food, but they're not a part of the marriage. Now, after the vows, and the vows are commitments, comes the ring. So there are two things in the wedding that cause people to know that the covenant has been initiated. One, of course, not the vows. No, that's, that's good. But the ring, the ring is the outward sign that you are married. It, be, it always, always asks the question, why do married men, why don't married men wear their ring? That's really great. I, I don't understand that. Why married men don't wear your wedding ring? I don't understand that. And it is something that the girl wants and that you give her. Uh, you give her that. Thank you, Wendy. You give her that uh, to initiate the commitment. All right. But then married men, they get a ring too, but they don't wear their rings. I don't know why married men don't value the ring the same way married women do. I know that there's some married women that take it off, but that's not the norm. That's why she wants that ring. She wants you on that knee and she wants that ring. Now, that's the seal. 
when you give the engagement ring, that this is a committed relationship. But now you get to the wedding ceremony. And now after the vows, because the vows is an inward work, the vows is inward. That's still your commitment. That's still what you are vowing to each other. But how do we know you're married? Because many times we meet you years after your wedding. We know it by your outward sign, which is your ring. That ring is the outward sign that you have made a commitment to somebody and that you are walking in covenant with that person on a daily basis. All right? <laughs> Woo, come on, come on. I need you to hear what I'm saying. This is, this is very powerful. I want you to understand. Now, so it is with circumcision. Circumcision is of the heart. Circumcision is the heart. Circumcision is the engagement ring. Circumcision of the heart. You make a commitment to Christ and you are circumcised. Now, watch this. And then you are buried with him in baptism. So the, so the doctrine of circumcision is now completed by the doctrine of baptism. Water baptism. So circumcision of the heart says that I am in a committed relationship. These are my vows. But then buried with him in baptism, that now is the outward sign that you are married. Now, I saw some foolishness on TV not long ago where one man had several wives. He was a polygamist and all the wives were sitting in the room and they was all, some was pregnant and some had children and they was all living, cohabitating, you know, that's foolishness, folks. That's altogether foolishness. And the fact that women agree to that is beyond insanity. That is beyond insanity. <laughs> Minister Tyrone wanted to say 43 years. Come on here, Minister, I love it. 43 years and I've never taken it off. Wow, that's powerful. That's powerful. That is powerful. I, congratulations, sir. God bless you. Come on now. <laughs> wow, that's fantastic. Mama Pearl, how long you and Papa Norway been there? And you wear that ring. You wear that ring. Because that is the outward sign. So I'm watching all of these. These And I don't watch a lot of TV. My, my, my stuff is pretty good. Food Network and HGTV and local news, maybe. Uh, but I just sat there and I said, wow, how, how crazy is that? That that you, that's beyond insanity. My sister and her husband were married 40 years, you know. Wow, <laughs> that's, that's wow. That's beyond insanity. I don't know how any woman in her right mind is going to be married to a man who has other wives. That's crazy. But that was a tradition under the law. That was a, a tradition under the law. But when Christ came, he fulfilled the law. And so even beyond it being crazy, it, it makes no sense for one man to have to support 11 wives. That's, that's, that is ridiculous. <laughs> Sharon Richmond Williams and absolutely Judane Taylor, welcome. Those of you that are coming in on Zoom. So baptism, the doctrine of baptism, the doctrine of baptism. Watch this. Deborah Phillips, I see that. That's powerful. The doctrine of baptism is the outward sign of your covenant with Christ, your commitment has been affirmed. Now, then there is the kiss, the kiss and the vow, the kiss, the vow, all of those things represent the fact that something internally is happening. But it is the ring, it is the outward sign. When, I, when I'm talking to married couples and they're going through what it is, the first thing they both take off is rings. <laughs> because what I want to show you is that I don't feel like I'm in covenant with you. 
You don't act like you're in covenant with me. That's the first thing that goes. Now, baptism, the doctrine of baptism, buried in baptism, and then raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead by the Holy Spirit. And you being dead in trespasses and sin and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive with him, having forgiven you of all your trespasses. It goes back to justification. Having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us. And he is taking it out of the way and nailed it to the cross, having disarmed the principalities and powers. He has made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Glory to God. Glory to God. So let no man judge you regarding food or drink or regarding festivals and new moons, Halloween, Christmas, Easter. No, listen, something much bigger has happened. And I've been buried in baptism. So I wear the ring. I am the bride of Christ. I, I went into the water of baptism, which we've read already does not save us by the taking away of the filth of the flesh. But it is an answer of good conscience unto God. So when people say, well, what happened uh, with the thief on the cross? He did not get baptized. No, he did not. But baptism on the cross would have been impossible. But the person who was the redeemer forgave him of his sins and declared over him, today you will be with me in paradise. So now there is nothing to be said. Now the new covenant is inaugurated by Christ on the cross through the blood of and the water that came out of his side. So now the blood of Christ, the waters of baptism, now become a part of our faith expression. Praise God. I hope you're getting this. And had there not been the shedding of blood, then there would not have been the remission of sins. And had there not been the remission of sins, there could not have been the baptism of the Holy Spirit. All right? So I need you to understand how this works, how this all works together. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Whoa, glory to God. Deborah said, I was married. I was married to Christ. Absolutely. And he has been married to you and he washes his bride with the washings of the water of the word. He washes his bride with the washing of of the water of the word. Victoria Felder said, is there still paradise? Absolutely, that's heaven. That's heaven. That's where God dwells, that's heaven. That's where the saints will go when we die. We go to be with the Lord and wherever the Lord is, it's paradise, praise God. All right, now let's go to Ephesians. Let's go back in our Bibles. I hope you have your paper Bibles. Hey, this is School of Holy Spirit, and I am Bishop Coletta J. Bond. I hope you've joined us now. Thank you for joining. And we are teaching on the basics of Holy Spirit 101. We're going back and dwelling down, drilling down in the basics. It's not good enough for you to have experienced. You now must teach and share. You must now be able to communicate your faith. Your experience is just your testimony. But people in this hour want more than your testimony. Amen? <laughs> now, let's go to Ephesians. And this language, this Pauline language is very familiar to many of us. Very familiar to many of us. And it is so vitally, I believe, important that we have the language and we have the scriptures amen that we have the language and we have the scriptures so it's my job <laughs> as the pneumatologist it's my job to make sure that you have what you need 
Good morning, Pastor John Davis, Elder Carol Ford, and that Boliante. Oh, you, you, <laughs> that's it. We is in school. Oh, yes, we are in the school of Holy Spirit. Good morning, Pastor Worship, Pastor Sheila Rhonda Dooley. Good morning, Patty Jones. Good morning, coming up the timeline, Pastor Martha Boggs. Thank you, Jacqueline Ben Hollingsworth. Thank you, thank you to my Instagram family. God bless you. Good morning. Let's go to Ephesians chapter four. Ephesians chapter four. Now, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling that is in, in which you were called. Here we go again with this walking, walking. We're talking about lifestyle. So anytime you see, particularly Paul, Paul talks a lot about the walk, the walk of the believer. He's not talking about your two feet. He's talking about your lifestyle. He's talking about your lifestyle. Amen. He's not talking about your two feet, what size shoe you wear. He's talking about your lifestyle. Now, watch this. It says, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing one another in love. Watch this. Verse three, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. This is why we should not argue with people's very particular and very specific denominational guidelines. I don't fuss about things that people believe. If you believe Christ, you feel with the Holy Ghost, I'm good. If you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the water, praise the Lord. Because you was baptized in Jesus' name, hallelujah. If you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the tarrying room, because you tarried for it, hey, praise the Lord, hallelujah. If you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit in your shower or in your car, hey, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I told y'all, don't try to box God in on how people receive the Holy Spirit. Don't do that. Don't do that. Because there are multiple outpourings and God knows his people. God knows how to deal with his people. So let us not belittle someone else's experience if their experience ultimately equals that they are saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. Let's not worry about how they got there. Amen? <laughs> Let's just praise God that they got there. Stop all this arguing. And endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Bishop Jackson was talking about peace this morning. Peace. My peace I give unto you. I preached a little bit of it Sunday. Not as the world give it. Hallelujah. Praise God. But but let's not let's and let's not look at each other. Ah, like, what? What you talking about? You had to tarry? Yeah, I tarry. Praise God, you tarry. Praise God. You got yours in the cars driving to work. Amen. I was at church and the Holy Spirit fell. I went to the altar. Let's not argue about that. Let us endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Watch this, verse four. There is one body. Woo, my God. There is one body. <laughs> Brother Thomas said, don't try to box God in. I was in my living room on the floor, but I got it. Come on. <laughs> Woo. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Good morning, Simons. Good morning, Ms. Sheba. Good morning, Cheryl. Good morning, Rochelle. Let's go. Come on. We, we in school. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. One body. One body. One body. Deborah Phillips, hallelujah, one body, endeavor, work at it, be intentional about it, praise God, Methodist, Pentecostal, Baptist, Catholic, we don't care, <laughs> I don't care, Jewish, Jews, Muslims, we don't care, the Arabs was at Pentecost, stop playing, you can stop telling people they don't know God because they don't know God your way, stop playing with that, stop arguing, one body and one spirit. Just as you were called into one hope 
of your calling. One Lord, one faith, and one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is above all, who is through all, and who is in you all. Hallelujah. I want you to grab that. Now, the doctrine of baptism. Hallelujah. The doctrines of baptisms. <laughs> One body, folks. One body. One body. One body. One body. And not, not everyone in the body of Christ. Now, y'all gonna get mad. I call Christians. I, 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 I want y'all to hear this. I want you to hear what I'm saying. One body. Oh, yes. Uh, Dr. Wendy, he preached that one Lord, one faith, one baptism. <laughs> Who is above all? Who's in all? Who's through in all? And his name is Jesus. What is God's name? Jesus. What is God's name? Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. He, he believed that thing. And I believe it too. Now I just said something. I want you. I want you to hear what I just said. One body. One body. One body. I love this. The big wall between us as people. We want people to know God our way. The highest level of retardation. Good God Almighty. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Sean say, huh? That's right. One body. One body. There's one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. My God, I have, I have met some sweet Jewish people who love Jesus, but they are Jewish. You better hear what I'm saying. One body. One body. They, have, they call themselves Messianic Jews, but they are Jews. They do not go by the name of Christians. I've met some amazing people who are in other faith expressions who love Jesus, but they do not name the name of Christianity in the faith, in, in different faith expressions. Now, you, 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 you got, you've got to hear this. You, you've got to hear this. Every group thinks they're the only one. Every group thinks that they're the only one. Christians think they're the only one. Muslims think they're the only ones. Well, not informed. Informed Muslims don't think that. But for the for the most part, they think, you know, whatever they think. And then Joe Witnesses, they think they're the only ones, right? Pentecostals, they think they're the only ones. <laughs> Church of our Lord Jesus Christ. People that they baptize in Jesus' name. Come on, I baptize. All these people think that they're the only ones. Everybody thinks that their way is the only way. Everybody thinks that ain't nobody going to get there but us, 144,000. And you've got to know that it's got to be more. <laughs> right? Methodists. Methodists think they're, they're the only ones because they, you know, you got United Methodists, you got uh, Colored Methodists. I hope they change that soon. Uh, AMEs, African Methodist Episcopal. You got you got Amy, uh, Amy Z. They are, everybody think they're the one. <laughs> but it's one body. One body with many parts. Oh, shot. Woo, come on, Michelle. We, we are not the only ones. And because they don't carry the name Christian does not mean that they are not in the body. You got to understand that Christians got the name at Antioch. Not at Calvary. Woo, I'm teaching. I'm teaching. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. I'm teaching. Cal Calvary was not about Christianity. The doctrine of justification, the doctrine of circumcision, the doctrine of baptisms was not about Christianity. Was not about Christianity. Thank you, Sharon. <laughs> the disciples had this same issue. They stopped people that was casting out devils. In, in the name of the Lord, in the name of God. And, and they was casting out devils. And it's like, wait, 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 wait. You can't do it because you, you're not doing it our way. 
Thank you, Jacqueline. I'm so glad to know that. Thank you. <laughs> and Jesus said, whoa, whoa, whoa. And they, they ran to Jesus and said, we stopped them. We stopped them. And they said, wait, what was they doing? He said, if they're for me, they're not against me. Leave them alone. Because I got sheep that don't go to your church. <laughs> That's not have been baptized your way. Said, some, some baptized by immersion. Some baptized by sprinkling. Some baptized. Come on here. Uh, when they ain't get baptized in Jesus' name. Look here. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. You got to understand there's only one body. There's one body. Who I'm teaching. A-W-M-E. African Wesleyan Methodist Episcopal. Wow. 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 <laughs> so they were not called Christians until Antioch. Not at Calvary. So don't get your head all in a, a tizzy because they are tongue-talking Jews or they're, they're, they're Christ-loving Muslims or they are, they are uh, informed biblically, informed spiritually and don't carry your brand. Or they went by the waters of baptism through immersion and you went by baptism by way of sprinkling let's not get into these fights folks <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah that's that is good the body when properly handled will heal itself if, if we would just understand there's one body watch this there is one holy spirit oh i want to get right there i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna I'm 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 root right there one body and one Holy Spirit. <clears throat> one body and one spirit. I need you to write that down. One body and one spirit. Woo, Rabbi Kish, Koto, Ramamamashi. Woo, one body and one spirit. One body and one spirit. I told you my story when I was working for a doctor and she invited me to go to her family in Sri Lanka. I took a team of people with me. We passed through Ireland and they blindfolded me to, to go in and teach because I introduced the doctor to, to the baptism of the Holy Spirit. She said, why is it that when you go in the room, you speak in those languages? What language is that? I said, I speak in tongues. She said, what is that? And we kept working together, working together. She was uh, a Hindu, Hindu uh, background. She knew about God. She had heard about Jesus Christ. Everybody's heard about Jesus Christ. And uh, she says, do you think that I can have that? I said, sure you can. You want to be filled with all the ghosts? She said, I don't know who all the ghosts is. I said, okay. I brought a literature, gave her information. And after she received in one of the uh, exam rooms, I never forget, I was in there cleaning up after the patient had gone out and she says, I heard you in here praying in that language. I want it. I said, lift your hands. I said, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I desire to be saved and filled with the Holy Spirit right now. And I'm telling you, it wasn't 30 seconds. She received the baptism with fluid tongues. And every day she come in, and I would say, oh, she was so excited. She was so eager. She was eager. These folks say eager. Oh, child, take y'all nine, nine, nine hours to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I'm telling you right now, that, that girl, that girl got the Holy Ghost so fast. It, 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 it was so fast. I was like, whoa. And she came into her, and she would be so excited. She said, you've got to come to my people. I said, I will go. She paid for our team. We went over there and went down into uh, a space. I didn't know where we were. I was blindfolded. And when they would take the blindfolds off of me, there was at least 2,000 people in this space seated. No Bibles, no nothing. But they were eager. They were eager. Sheila Johnson said that was me. They were eager. They were eager to receive the Holy Spirit. They were eager. Woo, Ramahashka. <laughs> Jackson. We're not in that hours and we woke out sweating with them. They're not eager. 
They're not eager. One girl came to me one day. She said, how come I can't receive it? I said, because you're not eager. You don't really want it. You kind of want it, but you don't really want it. You don't know it that you're not desperate. You don't know it's going to change your life. <laughs> Woo! I got in that space. I got in that space, baby. And I began to preach and share the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Someone had given them a Bible and they had torn the pages out of this one Bible and passed the pages around. So a few people had one page. And I talked about the power of the Holy Spirit. I talked about the power of the cross. I talked about the power of the resurrection. <laughs> Ooh, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. And when I, when I, when I began to, to teach about it, it was so powerful. And little by little, I'm telling you, little by little, they began to receive. They just started say we and the, and, and the doctor she was with me she, and she spoke to them in that language and she was my translator. Baby, I didn't even know where I was. The underground church. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. The underground church. Oh, shake here by the ocean. They were underground and and later I found out that we were in a newspaper factory. That one of them owned, they were very wealthy people. They own this place, and, that, and that's where they gather underground. You could hear the bombs. You hear the people fighting in war in Ireland before we went to Sri Lanka. Oh, my God. My God, I remember. Oh, my God. Oh, the underground church. They, they, not, they, they don't identify with any of this, but they, they're eager for the power of God. They're eager to know who God is. I went all the way into the village of Australia, the Aborigines, and started teaching to them why they have no clothes, no electricity, no nothing. There's one body. Glory to God. Emma. There's one body. There's one body. God, I thank you. Whoa, God, I thank you. God, I thank you. Uh, whoa, God, I thank you. One body, one body, and one spirit. Glory to God. Woo, God, Reboche, get him, Mama Hanna. Woo, see, we're not hungry and we're not thirsty. We're not eager. We're not thirsty. We're not thirsty for it. So I pour out water upon them that is thirsty, floods upon dry grounds. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy nice offspring. Good God Almighty. Woo, Shakena Mahanda. One body and one spirit. <laughs> oh my God, we're gonna get we're gonna get to this. We we done got we got caught up. <laughs> one body and one spirit. Your your particular portion of the body don't have it all. My particular portion of the body don't have it all. There's one body. Glory to God. I thank you. And one spirit. Oh, Shana Mohoshke. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And we've got that. We've got to be all right with how how different parts of the body function. That we come into the unity of the faith. That's why apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers are needed until we come into the unity of the faith, into the perfection of the body of Christ. Woo, shed out of my horse, God. Woo, one body, one body, one body. One body. <laughs> we left there and went over to Sri Lanka. There was no church. They are Hindus. We went over there. Our team, I took my team over there and we went over there and we preached the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And they wanted it. I said, Listen, will you love Jesus? Yes. Will you serve Jesus? Yes. And he will pour out his spirit upon you. And I'm telling you, we saw revival in Sri Lanka. We saw revival in Ireland in the underground church. God has blessed me to see how big, glory to God, how wide, how deep, and how long this thing is. Ooh, but if you don't know it, you know my shit. A, hallelujah. If you don't know it, you'll become small-minded and you'll become silo-thinking her, a silo thinking preacher, silo thinking evangelist. No, no. How deep? How wide? How long? How high? Oh, God. 
Woo, I got to go, y'all. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is doing something. God is doing something in the era of Holy Spirit. And you don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss this. Listen, we're going to drill down into this. We're going to keep drilling down into this. Glory to God. This is the school of Holy Spirit. This is the era of Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you, God has raised me up to release this knowledge in the earth for such a time as this. And I'm so glad that you're here. Listen, tag somebody, put it on your pages. I got to get out of here. I got to go. I love y'all. I got to go. <laughs> Glory to God. One body. Hey, Shonda. One spirit. Woo, glory. Hey, Shababa. One body. <laughs> yeah, she and what am I? One body. Just yelling all day. And one spirit. 